Hey everybody, it's Chris, and I'm back with another interview for you. And today it's Joe Cross, the legend himself, the Aussie legend. Uh, <laughs> Joe, well, that's very quiet, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Joe is a friend of mine, and uh, I've wanted to interview him for a long time. I'm, and now it's the perfect opportunity to do it because he's got a lot of fun stuff to talk about. But if you don't know, or if you haven't seen, he made a documentary film called Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead. And when was that? 2011? Well, well, it came out in 2011, Chris. But as you know, making a movie takes a few years. And the journey began for me in 2007, a full four years before launch date. So, Wow. Okay. I didn't realize time. that. But it's a great documentary. Uh, and it's about Joe's journey. Uh, juicing on a juice fast, traveling across the United States with a juicer in the back of his car and uh it's just great and uh so joe man good to see you you too chris mate it's always great to see you last time we were together was uh los angeles i believe we were over there at a conference together and it was great to great to meet in person and big fan of your work big fan of the the change and the impact that you're having to so many people's lives and everywhere i go everyone knows chris it's kind of like hey do you know do you know that guy chris oh yeah i know they go wow what's he like um so he's just he's just like what you see is what you get with chris he's like the same the same in person as he is on 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 screen and what you've done with your programs and the way you've helped so many people mate and brought so much um joy to so many people suffering and pain mate it's a full credit to you and you know i really i really am in awe of the work you've done thank you joe well you have helped a lot of people yourself. And that's why I'm such a big fan of yours. And um, would you, I would love for you to tell a, a just an a abbreviated version of your story, how you discovered nutrition and your journey with your health and how, how that all came together. Sure. So, so Chris, I'm, I, I think that a lot of us sort of end up on planet earth and we become very react reactionary to what's around us. And I was no different. I was just a normal, as we call in Australia, knockabout bloke, going about my business, doing my, my thing called life. And I had the brochure of life. And that brochure of life was go to school, be a good you know, <clears throat> son to my mum and dad, be a good brother to my sister and my brother, and be a good friend and do all those things and go and work hard. And maybe one day you'll get married. Maybe one day you'll buy a house with a white picket fence. And there's this there's this journey that we sort of believe when we're young that we're on in this sort of brochure of life. And nowhere along that journey is that you're going to end up taking pills and medication and you're going to be in hospital and you're going to be poked and prodded for debilitating autoimmune diseases. And my, my sort of wake up call came when I was in my early thirties after this life of never being sick, never really going to the doctor except for, you know, normal checkups. Maybe when you got the flu, take a pill, have a headache, take a pill, can't sleep, take a pill. Um, that's kind of that sort of world that I was exposed to. And I got sick and so, oh, well, what do you do? You take a pill. And I took a pill, but the doctor said, hey, Joe, you're going to take this pill for the rest of your life. And I went, oh, didn't see that one coming, Chris. But because I was so busy with work and, you know, being an entrepreneur and building my company and companies at the time when I was in my early 30s, I kind of like just brushed aside this idea of why am I taking this pill? And I just took the pill, Chris. And, and what was the, what was the diagnosis? Oh, diagnosis was chronic urticaria angioedema, which is essentially is a disease of the body attacking itself and creating the, the histamine to be released and dilated through the blood vessels, which gives welts and swelling. And when that, when that histamine is released, it goes into the joints, which makes the joints incredibly painful. So you, your wrist can't turn, your fingers can't close, your arm. It's just a, a very, it's, it's like having serious arthritis um, and it comes and goes. And it, for me, what was the trigger was physical pressure. So a seatbelt, holding a baby, carrying luggage, uh, lying down on the ground, um, just anything that involved physical touch triggered this uh problem this this attack on within from within and so my my system was all messed up and it didn't know it didn't know what was a mosquito bite and what was a physical touch point so then on, on the back of that 
and taking those pills, I was kind of like just in that that autopilot, Chris, of every morning, every night, this is what Joe does. Takes five milligrams of prednisone and then takes another five milligrams of prednisone and then takes another five. So I'm at 15, sometimes I'm at 25, sometimes I've got up to 40 milligrams a day. And then it gets, over time, it gets worse and the, the number of milligrams from the first couple of years starts to go up and I'm at 50 and 60. And as anyone would know who's got any kind of insight into the medical world, that kind of dosage of, uh, of a steroid really has incredible n- negative side, in, uh, side effects. Moon face, hunchback, osteoporosis, weight gain. There's an enormous amount of, of problems associated with that, that drug. It's like a carpet bomb. It wasn't a drug that was addressing the problem. It was just carpet bombing my whole, my whole system. So when I got to 40, I went, hold on, eight years has just gone by with me being this robot with the pills. Surely there's got to be a better way, Chris. Surely maybe I'm responsible. Maybe I need to step up to the mark here and take some accountability for how Joe got to where Joe was. And that really is the beginning of my turnaround and I decided that I needed to really stop consuming white, black, brown and gray foods and eat foods that had color. And we're not talking about artificial, we're talking about natural color. And that was the shift. And the idea of juicing was a big part of that to supercharge my micronutrient intake. It was to... You know, I know you are a huge fan of water fasting and anyone who who is listening on my side of the world who doesn't know Chris, please go and check out Chris's water fasting modules and and his um, work on water fasting and a lot of his interviews because he and I are incredibly aligned on this philosophy of the body getting out of the way and allowing the body to self-heal and to repair itself. And so... Water fasting for me back then, Chris, I didn't know anything like I know now. So that kind of like was like, oh, that, that, that can't be good for you. Oh, no, not eating. Come on, I've done 40 years of eating. So the the, the bridge was the juicing where I would juice the, the produce. And um, I did that for 60 days, as you know. And a couple of mates said, hey, Joe, you know, you're a crazy, crazy loud Australian. Why don't you put this, you know, camera on yourself? Because you're the least likely person to do this, you know. You, you come from the world of a suit and tie. You, you're not like a hippie, long hair, standing on your head all day on top of a hill, you know? So it, it was like, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll do that for fun. You know, maybe that'll help other people in my position and maybe, just maybe, it might help me continue and, and complete my journey. So that's basically as a abridged as I can get, Chris, where that was the beginning of Fat, Sick and Nearly Dead and I, I can do the spoiler alert now that um, I'm no longer on medication. And it, it was it was basically five months. It was 60 days of juice and it was three months of just eating a completely strict plant-based diet. And were um, you all were you all raw for six months or you're or just no, no, I yeah. wasn't raw, I was steamed and raw, but the rules, the rules for engagement were fire and water, and that was it. There was no deep frying or none of there was no no oil involved. Um, it was it was fire and water. So if you could uh, uh, steam it, that was fine. If you could um, put it on a pan under fire and just like uh, grill it, that was fine. Um, but that's basically what the what what the rules of engagement were for those three months. And look, it took that much time to come down from the sixty milligrams of prednisone to zero because it's not a drug you just drop overnight because you're, you've got to train your body to produce um, that cortisone. And so the, it, it's not a drug you drop off quickly. So I may have been able to get off it sooner, but I took it um, medical advice and I slowly decreased it. Um, and I, I got down to two and a half milligrams pretty easily, Chris, from the juicing. And then it took another three months just to get that last bit out of the system. And to be honest, you know, I have not had a single reaction. I haven't had a single episode. And that was, I started the journey in, in October of 07. It was March 08. 
by the time I threw away the pills. And I'll be very honest, I didn't throw the pills away because I was worried that it might come back. And it was like a full year of security of having these pills before I finally traveled with Adam Chris and actually broke the umbilical cord. You know, it was just like a psychological thing that maybe I'll relapse. Uh, this is going great, but maybe there's something that I'm not aware of here. So that, that was um, 2008. And what are we now? 2022. So 14 years, 14 years. And, and it was March. So we're April. So yeah, it's 14 years of, of no medication. Um, and I don't take any pills. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not saying that people on medication should stop doing that. I appreciate that some people require that, but for me, I, I go to the doctor, I, I go and check my bloods twice a year and I, I, I don't need any medication. Um, and I'm really grateful uh, for that. And, and I'm not perfect as Chris knows, we've talked offline and stuff. I, I'm not perfect. I have my, my addictions and my demons with sugar that I battle with. And that causes me um, fluctuations in weight, but what it hasn't done and I haven't allowed it to do yet is to attack me on my health side from my old urticaria or high blood pressure or high cholesterol or high blood sugar. I'm still going great in all of those numbers. So that's something that I'm, I'm very proud of, but every day is a battle for me, Chris, every day is a battle, mate. Yeah, I understand that. And it's like your story is so great because there's so many people that have, uh, let's just call it random chronic illness that they're taking medication for that have been led to believe that they have to take this medication for the rest of their life, right? That there's no cure for their condition. And you were on medication for 10 years or eight, what, seven, eight, eight years. Yeah, eight, eight years. years. I mean, that's a long time long to time, be man. taking a, a prescription medication. Obviously, you know, you needed more and more and more of it as time went on. And so I think, you know, there's a big message here, which is that uh, you don't assume that your chronic condition is not healable, that it's not reversible. If you're willing to radically transform your life, if you're willing to change your diet, if you're willing to break your bad habits, uh, then you can put yourself in a position and assist your body in its ability to heal. And you have to become a bit of an investigator because you have to get to the root causes of your disease. And most of them, most chronic diseases are caused by a poor diet, by our lifestyle choices, and in some cases, environmental factors like toxic pollutants and things. But all of those things are things you can figure out and change in your life. So, I mean, this is, I, ju I just love your story. It's fantastic. And you've yeah. inspired millions of people. I mean, how many people have seen Fat, Sick, and Early Dead? Like 30 million people? Oh, or more than 30 now. I mean, it's, it's, look, Chris, the actual success of the film really took me by surprise. I mean, you know, like it blew me away. Uh, I, I was at an event in Miami here last night and a guy came up to me out of the blue. He was, um, he was uh, working security. He said, hey, you're, you're Joe DeJuicer, aren't you? Man, I got to thank you. I want, you know, it just happens to be all over the world, like these people that it, it's a sleeper. It's one of these films that if someone's not well, someone will send it to them and say, hey, watch this. And because the movie is not preaching, you know, and I really wanted to make sure because, you know, there's a time in life for preaching and there's a time not for preaching. I think if you want to sit down and watch a film with your family, that's not a preaching time. You know, you want to be engaged in the story. You want to learn something and you want to feel like you actually care about people in that story. Because if you don't care, you won't watch. So I was blessed by the people I had that came together and helped me package this, put it together. I had no idea what I was doing, but I did know that if you spoke the truth, if you were honest, if you allowed that transparency to come down the camera, people have got really good radars for people who are not telling the truth. Yeah. They, they, they can really pick up on it. And I think that's a key ingredient. It's why you're so successful, Chris, you know, like you just speak from the, from the spirit, like your inner spirit comes out when you talk. I think half the time, sometimes people like you and I, we never know what we're saying. It's just coming from somewhere that's inside. That's just the truth. And because you speak the truth, 
you're never going to get stumbled up. You're never going to make a mistake. You're never going to say one thing on one interview and none other. It's just, you say how it is. And I think that people are really smart about that. So that was one of the big advantages for why the film was so successful and why it is today. I mean, I still get checks every month from all these platforms all over the world that people pay a dollar or 20 cents or 30 cents or whatever it is. It's just a, it's just a gift that keeps on giving in sense of people like, I mean, in India, Chris, the other day I was speaking to 5,000 Indians on a zoom from India and they're massively getting introducing now because there is a lot of chronic diabetes issues in India, it's 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 one of the major problems in the in society. There is diabetes, so as it is in most Western cultures, but particularly in India. So, look, I think I think I was lucky, and you know, you and I have discussed this idea of luck. Lady luck follows a person of action, so you've got to do stuff to get lucky. But I did enough stuff to get lucky with this one that it, the stars aligned, the film came to life. It's helped me enormously. It's helped others. And um, it's, just a, it's just an all-round good story about how, as you said earlier, everybody out there with a chronic illness, it's worth a shot. It doesn't mean you're going to get success, but it's worth a shot. Yeah, why One not change your life, like, Chris, right? you, you said a minute ago that triggered me as well when you were talking is, and this is something that I think a lot of people can relate to. I had a buddy of mine who recently his health went downhill in a bad way and he wasn't his diet wasn't like what you would call totally off the off the rails but it wasn't good it wasn't great let's put it that way i'm convinced and he is now that because of his poor diet what actually ended up happening is his sleep deteriorated and he started to move into this world of sleep apnea so it wasn't actually the diet that caused the dissension of his health. But it was the trigger that caused something else to cause the downhill. And he gained a lot of weight around his chest, his neck, you know, upper body from drinking too much alcohol and so on. And sleep apnea came in his like late 40s. Uh, and he went to the sleep clinic and they said, oh, this is really bad. He's got to have the CPAC machine. Since he's had the machine on, Guess what? His health returned and his diet's returned. So that catch-22 of something else can trigger. I think it's important for people to understand it may not just be the diet that originally caused, but it can trigger other things in your health that can cause it. Yeah, it's this progressive decline, the vicious cycle, right? Where over time, your health spirals downward. And the good news is, is you can interrupt that cycle. And if you start making changes to your life, positive changes to your diet and to your life and to your routine, you reverse the cycle. And then you create what we call a virtuous cycle. And that's where your health spirals up. That's where you start to recover. You start to feel better. You start to get better. Your energy comes back. You lose excess body fat, right? And a chronic issues begin to resolve pain issues, diabetes, heart disease, high cholesterol, hypertension, cancers, you know, all these wonderful things like your body can heal, but you really have to be deliberate about the way you live your life. And yeah, I just love your story. And and it's fat, sick and nearly dead is pretty, pretty easy to find. I'm pretty sure it's on Netflix and you can watch it on uh, Amazon. Not on Netflix anymore. Oh, not, not on Netflix. Netflix. Okay. No, but we're on Amazon. We're on iTunes. We're on YouTube. We're on a lot of those platforms, but Netflix, we, uh, we decided to part ways with Netflix, Chris, because um, they weren't. They, they, it was. There's a lot of reasons, but we're now not on Netflix anymore. Yeah, it's it's okay. We don't have to get into it. <laughs> we don't need. It. It's a boring story, anyway. Yes, yeah, stupid, boring business uh, related stuff. Okay, so um, cool. So anyway, I want to encourage everybody to watch that movie. You also made a follow up to it, Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead Two. You have a program called Reboot with Joe, which is a 15 day juicing program to help people like get into juicing and uh yeah you've just made such a huge impact on on people just turning them on to the power of food and the power of juicing and i just anyway when i found you back in whenever it came out 2011 i i was immediately loved you and your message because obviously juicing was a big part of my cancer healing journey so now well, thanks chris i appreciate that man yeah yeah um and i drove through your state too, tennessee on the movie we we went through Tennessee. I learned about a company called Chuck E. Cheese that I'd never heard of yes. before, <laughs> and uh, that gets a mention in the in the in the film. But uh, yeah, Chuck so it, it, it's great, mate. It was great.
Chuck E. Cheese is still in business. I think some people uh, know really? it. It's yeah, like a ch kid's pizza place with with like, you know, animatronic robots that right. uh, sing for you while you have your birthday party. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> Which I, I had a birthday party at. Uh, well, it was a different place. It was it was there was a competitor called Showbiz right. Pizza and they were the, they were doing the same exact thing. And Chuck E. Cheese ended up buying out Showbiz. But what? Yes, I had a birthday party at a Showbiz Pizza. <laughs> yeah. Well, the one, the one thing I learned is that the people from the South in America, they're such a friendly open-hearted type of people, Chris. I mean, I'm sure you get this a lot, but I, I love going down to the south of the United States. They're just really, that Southern hospitality. And I was in Georgia last week, just so friendly. Everyone's just like a really, you know, they're great people, the American people. They're really, really great. And they're, they're welcoming me into their hearts and, and lives. And it's just been a blessing. So I want to say thank you to all the people out there that have done that. It's, 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 they're, they're really, it's a credit to you and your country, Chris. That's really great. Yeah, we're, you know, Southern culture, uh, it's not perfect, but there's definitely a lot of friendly people. And uh, it's its a stark contrast to some cities where you go and everyone seems to be so busy and inwardly focused that they're, they don't even acknowledge any other person around them. So I've definitely experienced that as well. Okay, so let's talk about, this has been a long time coming for the guy who has been a huge advocate for juicing since 2011, so 11 years as a public figure, helping people eat more fruits and vegetables, helping people juice. Uh, you have worked with and developed a juicer, your own yeah. juicer, and it's it's called the Nama Juicer. And That's right. I, um, before you talk about it, I, I'm going to talk about it for a second. So I remember when you first, you know, told me that you were developing a juicer. And I, and my, I didn't tell you this, but my thoughts were like, oh, okay, here we go. Here's another juicer on the market. It's probably going to be crappy, right? And I'm going to be in an know, awkward I, position. Right. I'm going to be in an awkward position because Joe's going to want me to promote it. Uh, and I'm, I'm not going to like it. And the reason I say I'm thinking all this is because I had a bad experience with yeah. another juicer company. And this is a story I don't think I've told publicly. So it's a perfect opportunity to tell it, but right. Years ago, you know, when I was just getting going with my blog, it was probably 2013, 14, something like that. And I was getting traction. Uh, a company reached out to me and said, we want you to be in our infomercial. We have a brand new juicer. And, uh, and I, and so, and we'd love for you to be in our infomercial and it's going to air in like 150 cities for a couple years. And, uh, th this, these were the, the, the team that developed this also did the George Foreman grill. <laughs> okay. So I'm like, what? Okay. These, these people know what they're doing. Like this could be huge. So I was really excited about that opportunity and I was like, Oh, awesome. Okay. Send me the juicer. So they send me the juicer and I, I start using it and it was a piece of crap. It was awful. <laughs> okay. It jam. I mean, I'm not kidding. The first time I used it, it was jamming up. It was just, it didn't produce very much juice compared to the one I had. And it was like, man. And so I had to wrestle with this because I was like, man, I really want to be a part of this, you know, infomercial project. This would be huge for me and, and yeah. helping me reach more people. And, but I really don't like this product. And it was an expensive juicer. You know, it was, it was not like a hundred dollar juicer. And so I was like, man, it's kind of, it's, kind of expensive and it doesn't work great and I don't like it. So I, I, I just had to, I had to wrestle with that. And I finally called them up and just said, Hey, I just, I can't do it. I, I just, I'm not. And my excuse was, was I'm just, I'm just not ready for, to do this. So anyway, long story short, they, they, they did some test marketing. The juicer flopped. <laughs> some other w influencers were on their infomercial and got a lot of backlash from wow. their audience uh, because the juicer was such a lousy product. <laughs> okay, so so that's that was my like, you know, frame framework coming into the conversation with you about yeah. the Nama juicer. So anyway, yeah. um, your your company sent me one. We used it and we liked it. And then you came out with this new one called the J2 and the J2 blew my mind. Like this, this is the juicer that I wish I had invented uh, years ago, because, you know, the biggest problem with juicers is you have to like jam all the produce in, you know, and 
It takes a long time, right? It's very time consuming and people will, they'll buy a juicer and they'll use it for a short time, but then they kind of just get sick of the effort. Yeah. And then it goes on the shelf or in the cupboard and, and then they just get out of the routine unless they're just hardcore committed, which I was uh, to getting well. And so the Nama juicer, uh, the new one, the top section has this giant carafe. I don't know if that's the technical yeah, we, term. We actually call that the hopper. The hopper. The amazing innovation about this juicer is you can just put whole apples, whole lemons, whole carrots. There's very little prep, right? You drop it all in there. You close the lid and then you just press the button and then starts juicing. You got the juice coming out of this end. You got the pulp coming out over here and it you can walk away, yeah. right? You can go do push-ups, right? You can take out the trash. You can start, you know, doing a little bit of prep for your next batch, whatever it is. Like it is almost a hands-off juicer. And it's pretty easy to clean too. I mean, it's, it has a few parts. You take it apart, you do a little bit of scrubbing and soap and water, and it's, it's clean and ready to go. So I love this juicer. It is my new favorite juicer and I've used a ton of juicers and they're all in my mind, most juicers are, they're either cheap or they're, uh, you know, quality and you're going to pay more for quality, but all the quality juicers on the market are pretty much the same. They're all very similar. And this one is completely different. And, um, so I just want to give you a rave well, review about it because thank you, Chris. I, I know you're I, excited too. And the team at Nama, I'm, I, I know our engineers and all the people that work really hard. Um, our CEO, Dan Sheehan, I know that he and the marketing team, you know, they all deserve a huge pat on the back because it's been incredible reviews, just like what you said. And um, it's been a really great team effort at Nama. And it's got, um, we're very excited and we're only just getting started. Uh, you know. Yeah, this came out last year, right? That's when the, the yeah, J2, the J2 yeah. came out in October last year. Yeah. And um, the Vitality 5800 came out two years before that. So it's interesting to hear your story about this infomercial because, look, and I, I don't talk about this a lot either, like you tell a story. You know, at the end of the day, people like you and I have a responsibility to speak the truth, talk the truth, and share what we can. And also, you know, I'm not a medical expert, so I give my opinion on something, but I always say, hey, but you got to check it out for yourself. This is what Joe thinks, and you say what Chris thinks, and from your experience. And there are a lot of shortcuts in this world that you can make as an influencer to actually get in that short buck and bring in that money in, you know, up front, but is it going to have longevity? And what's it going to do to your reputation? And do you want to just take money from people because it's money, or do you want to actually give people something that is a uh you know that's that that's value to them that they're going to hold dear and and utilize and it's going to be an advantage and a benefit to them and i know which where you lie because you and i are similar in that we don't want to take shortcuts and you know i'll be honest with you you know i took three or four years where a lot of dangling carrots pardon the pun were um were, were, were put out there for me and i just held firm and I said, no, I'm going to wait until I can sit down with the right people, get the right people, and we're going to do it. We're going to do it right. We're going to do it properly. And, you know, when you take a year or two years or three years, that's a lot of missed opportunity. And you're worried, are you going to be relevant? Are people still going to know who you are? I mean, you know, you, you, we're human. You go through all those insecurities and so on. And so, you know, it's just been an incredible ride for me for essentially from 07 because you know I made the movie before people saw it so for me it's been you know a 15 year journey uh, and just only in the last couple of years to actually finally have a product after all that time people say oh it's an overnight success and you know we all know those don't happen it's taken a lot of hard work a lot of time and we, the good news is we're just getting started. I wish I could share with you all the stuff we're doing, but I'm not allowed to because they'd shoot me if I said <laughs> new stuff coming down the road. But it is it is very exciting. And we've just, you know, uh, opening up to other parts of the world. So Australians and Europeans and, 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 and um, people in the UK can participate now with those plugs. And why we've got different plugs all over the world in 2022, Chris, so I don't know, but we still do have all these crazy voltage and plug issues in. in <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. And, and, you know, when you make a machine 
to go through all of the different country regulations and all of those things, it's, an, it's, a, it's a monumental job to actually sell a machine that plugs into mains power in your house. I mean, if you think about that, if you're, if you're selling something that's an analog product, like you're selling a glass or a bottle or a, or a stand, that's fine. But when you plug something into the mains of your house, you're going to a different level. And so there's a lot of hard work and a lot of, lot of effort. So I'm really pleased and glad to hear um, what you've said, Chris. I, I, will, I will say that that cleanup part and that preparation part are the two big things that stop people from juicing, like you said. And I think that the J2 goes a long way. I mean, you know, it goes a long way from where we've been in terms of making that prep, like a cucumber, you just chop it once, half a cucumber, put it in the hopper, C celery, maybe two two bunches of boom, two cuts straight in. So it's-, it's But like it's, whole, it's apples, very, whole apples, whole apples, whole lemons, apples, they don't I have to be chopped apples. at all. Yeah, two apples I put in, um, and I and I don't mind um, the lemon rind. If you want to peel your lemon, you can, but I don't mind the lemon rind personally as a taste. I love it. So you just put you just put that in. Um, no, look, it's very exciting, and um, we're we're uh, we're pleased that people like you and other wellness influencers, people that do this for a living and really juice every day, um, are, are so excited. So it's really good, and and you know. Uh, a, a good friend of mine, Doug Evans, I was talking to him the other day. I don't know if you know Doug. Mm -hmm. Doug's big on sprouts. And he's been juicing a lot of sprouts. And he's found the J2 to be awesome for that. I don't know if your sprouting is a big thing you juice at all, Chris. I don't know if that's... I, I typically don't juice sprouts, but I have no problem with it. Yeah. Well, I think there's a lot of people getting into this growing sprouts at home too. Yeah. Um, and that's awesome to see that people are, you know, for a few cents of seeds are getting four or five dollars worth of worth of uh nutrition and value and we all know how healthy sprouts are for you and great for the kids put on the lunches uh it's just a and it's a it's, it's just an all-around great thing and that's the thing about juicing which i find chris is that you know getting kids to eat a lot of green vegetables can be quite difficult but getting them to have uh shrek juice not so difficult you know yeah, you put a bit of apple, put a bit of lemon in there, maybe some lime, give it some sweetness, a pear, uh, throw, throw some pineapple in, and it only needs to be around about 15 to 20% of the volume, and you'll, you'll achieve that sweetness. In fact, lemon goes a long way to helping anyone who thinks that green is a bit too bitter. Um, that, that lemon can really counteract that, that taste profile. So... Look, there's a, there's so many things to discuss. I don't want to overtake and go places, but that was just some like you know, some 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 riff in there with your brother about juicing. Yeah, and well, and I have a video with me using the Nama juicer. So for anybody that wants to see it in action, we'll link to that uh, in the show notes below this video, and we can probably put a link up here in the corner or something too. Um, so uh, yeah, anyway. I, look, Amazing juicer, super thrilled. We've had it and you know, I'm not one to jump in and promote something right off the bat because I'm cautious. I don't wanna get stung with recommending a product that turns out to be lousy later, right? It's because my reputation is really important to me. So we've had I, this- I, in I knew that while we were putting this together, I knew how you felt, Chris, don't worry about that. Yeah, but to, uh, this is really for the people watching. So we've had this in our kitchen for six or seven months. So, I mean, we've used it a lot, so we're very comfortable with it. And I'm very comfortable with it now, just sharing it with my audience saying, this is a great product. Also, it has a really good warranty too. It's like, what's the warranty on it? Uh, it's 15 years. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so years, we stand by 15 the year warranty. G good luck finding a 15 year warranty on any other juicer or frankly, almost any other product <laughs> yeah. on the market. Right. So, I mean, that's pretty incredible too. Um, and look, the guys at Nama are also, you know, if you have a problem, if something breaks, you know, customer service, we're right on top of that. And, and, you know, people ask me, can you put in a dishwasher? I wouldn't. It's not recommended. Yeah, I wouldn't. There are certain parts. If you're in a rush and you've got to go and you want to do it once or twice, fine. But the problem is the heat when it goes into some of the parts that are fragile, like the, the little catch, 
that enables cleaning. It's just rinsing is fine. You're putting natural produce through. And of course, a lot of people don't talk about this, but Chris and I are aware of it. You know, produce isn't cheap. So you want to make sure if you're going to be putting something into a juice, that's your value is your produce. So you want to get extract out as much of the nutrition as possible. And, you know, with the Nama J2, you are getting sometimes three and four times more volume than a, a centrifugal high speed juicer when it comes to leafy greens. So it's, it's one of those things. Yeah. It might cost a little bit upfront more than, a centrifugal juicer, say for 150 or 200 dollars, but it's what mileage, if you want to use that analogy, um, you're getting out of it in terms of output. Uh, in the long run, you're gonna you're gonna pay for itself in, in yeah. the very long. Run. Yeah, that's a really really great point. I mean, the 15 year warranty is huge. I mean, this is not a cheap juicer; it's a very high quality juicer, and um, yeah. It, it's worth every penny. And the nice thing too, it takes up about as much uh, counter space as a blender. So it has a very yeah. small, a lot of, you know, people complain about juicers for all kinds of reasons, but one of them is like, it's too big. I don't like it on my counter. Like it's ugly. You know, people have all these sort of superficial reasons for <laughs> not liking juicers. And, uh, and this one is actually very attractive and it has a small footprint, doesn't take up a lot of space. Like, so you've really, uh, I think, eliminated a lot of those hurdles that some people have <laughs> for juicers that yeah. are really uh, irrational, right? But anyway, um, well, I, I respect things, it. One of the things I also talk about, Chris, is, and I think you you would uh, you would uh, sort of associate yourself, or you would you would understand this sort of line of thinking. I understand that a purchase price like this can be quite a lot of money. For people, it's like a it's 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 a big spend out of their hard earned dollars. Yeah, I mean it's a, it's an appliance. Yeah. So if you have a friend that has a juicer, even if it's not the Nama J two, and you get access to that, just say twice a week, go over and borrow their juicer, or go to their house, take some produce, and make enough juice so you can make say three bottles of juice just for you, not for the family, just for you. Make it a green juice, make it celery, cucumber, lemon, kale, ginger, apple, baby bok choy, turmeric, wet. put in a whole bunch of greens, a little bit of apple if you want the sweetness. And just drink one of those every morning before you do anything else in your day. Just, just drink the glass, drink the bottle, drink a, a full glass like this. You can see I'm nearly done here on mine, but drink a full glass, do it seven days in a row. So you're going to need to make another trip over to your buddy's juice place and bring the bottles back, put them in the fridge. Three days is fine. You can juice and store for three days. Beyond that, we don't, we don't, we don't do that. But three days is our 72 hour window. If you don't feel better after that seven days, like it's kind of like one of those infomercial ads, money back. Because <laughs> everybody who does that for seven days in a row feels better. Because the amount of concentration of nutrition, they're getting like seven stalks of celery. They're getting a whole bunch of kale leaves. They're getting half an apple. They get, when, when you look at it in context of what you're extracting out in nutrition and supercharging into that glass, which I call a garden in a cup, liquid sunshine, okay? You can't help your cells inside are so happy they're being fed the the information that they're getting, the, the level of nutrition, that's something over a seven day period, you can't help but feel better. And that to me, if you're frightened of spending that money, do that first, try and borrow, beg, borrow, steal, whatever, don't steal, beg, borrow for the juicer and see how that goes. Because you'll be shocked at how those seven day challenges can really impact the way you look at yourself, the, the opinion you have of yourself, like, your self-esteem, your confidence level, your ability to make smarter choices during the day, that particular day. Maybe you won't have the bagel and cream cheese. Maybe you won't do the sandwich. You'll do the salad. There's a whole lot of knock-on effects that come from that. So there you go. That's a little tip from me if you really are struggling to think whether or not it's the right thing for you. Excellent advice. Love the tip. <laughs> And uh, I could not agree more. I mean, this again, this is not a pitch for this juicer. This is a pitch for juicing, for exactly. drinking fresh 
vegetable juices. And when yeah. you get, when you do it, seven days is a great uh, a, achievable target for someone. Try it seven days, drink fresh juice first thing in the morning and then see how you feel because yeah, you will find that you start to feel good. And um, you're giving your body concentrated nutrition that it probably really just hasn't had in a long time, you know, or if exactly. ever. Exactly. And that's only two sessions a week, right? Yeah. That's not waking up, having to prep and do everything, guys. That's actually go to the fridge. I got my little bottle here. My, my, uh, my friend's house I'm staying at. He knows how much I love Jesus. So he made some of these for me before I got here. And it's just a very simple thing. Boom. First thing in the morning. Then we're going to decide what we're going to do. It's 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 a it's a great great road test. That's awesome. Well, what I've told folks in my community for a long time is, you know, there's a lot of juicers out there, and the most important thing is that you are juicing, right? That you're juicing for your health. You're helping yourself with a juicer. And you know, if you're broke, if you are just flat broke, you can find. Chances are, someone you know has a juicer they're not using. Good point. Post on Facebook. Anybody got a juicer I can use, right? Uh, yep. Look on Craigslist. Look on eBay. Look on Amazon. Go to yard sales, garage sales. Like there, you can find juicers, a very, very inexpensive, very cheap. Not that it's a cheap juicer, but a, a cheap price on a used yep. juicer just to get going. And that's that is the most important thing. Just find something and get juicing. Right now, if you get serious about it and you really want a great one that you're going to just love, uh, then yes, my favorite is this Nama J2 juicer. It, um, my wife loves it. My sister has one. She loves it. Everybody, I've shared it with our, with our private community uh, and uh, everyone who has bought it, every single person who has bought it that has given me feedback loves this juicer. And so to me, uh, we've had no complaints, right? And Usually when you recommend something, somebody's complaining right. about, you know, whatever, somebody, yeah. but we just haven't. Everybody's just loves this juicer. So that's my glowing endorsement. Um, oh, and, I appreciate that very much, Chris. Yeah. Appreciate it very much. Yep. And you can find the website, Nama Well, N-A-M-A, Nama Well.com. That's where you can go see the videos and learn all about the juicer and all the details and all that kind of stuff. And I'm an affiliate. So if you want to use my coupon code, you can get 10% off. That's Chris 10, Chris 10. That is my 10% off coupon code that you can use if you want to buy a Nama juicer. But again, the most important thing is that you start juicing, give your body nutrition, put it in there. Okay. And my, most of you know my story, but if you don't, my my biggest strategy to help my body recover from cancer was overdosing on nutrition that's what i that's just was the the terminology that that uh i came up with at the time which was to flood my body with nutrition with vitamins minerals enzymes antioxidants and all of these wonderful incredible phytonutrients that are found in plant food and so eating a plant-based diet was a huge massive change for me, mostly raw food, and then juicing. And I was drinking 64 ounces of fresh juice every single day. And I did multiple juice fasts. So again, that that is a what I call massive action, right? That is a massive action strategy for radical life change. And um, so if you're on that path, or you're thinking about getting on that path, my book, Chris Beat Cancer, will be very helpful to you. Um, for, so you can understand what I've done uh, and how I did it. And um, and there's lots of wonderful testimonials about healing cancer on crispycancer.com. So I hope you'll check those out. You'll get a lot of inspiration and you'll see the common threads <clears throat> between all of these people who have healed advanced cancers. So um, we can learn from each other. We can learn from our successes. We can learn from our failures. But, you know, the beautiful thing about the Internet and zoom and right skype and social media is that we can share information with each other in a way that was never possible like this wasn't possible 20 years ago and now um you know we can we can just help each other so easily but you have to be willing to change right joe 100 percent. the uh, the job is in front of you it's like the boy or girl with the wheelbarrow the job is in front of you and it's up to you now that's great. Well, thank you, Joe. Congratulations. You, Always great, mate. 
Uh, congratulations on your success. I'm, as you know, I'm a huge fan of yours. Thank you for all the good work you're doing. Uh, and congrats on the Nama, the success of the Nama Juicer. It's such a cool product. It's our, it's our favorite. I even, I shared this last fall around Christmas time. It's like this, this is my favorite discovery of 2021, right? It was the Nama Juicer. It's like, this is the coolest product I've found this year. Uh, and, uh, probably will still be the coolest product of 2022. <laughs> so. oh, well, that's great, mate. Really appreciate it. All right. Well, thanks, Joe. Thanks for watching, everybody. It's good to see you. And uh, please share this video with people that you think would be interested in this. Joe's story is amazing. Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead is an incredibly inspirational documentary that people in your life who are fat or sick or struggling with chronic conditions, sit them down, make them watch this documentary. It will give them encouragement and inspiration, and it'll get the wheels turning, right, about what's possible and hopefully break them out of this victimhood mentality that the medical industry often sort of shoehorns people into believing that there's nothing they can do to help themselves get well. And that's false. That's, that is not true. You have the power to change your life. You have the power to change your future and restore your health. You just got to be willing to take action. So thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.